Welcome back to Ford Friday. We're once again working on our 2019 Ford Explorer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, link's up there, I'll get you caught up. Let's get back to work. So our painting gnomes were here. It's time to get it all put back together. So we'll start with the back door. Slide the door handle in, put the cap behind it on, screw the cap in, I'll put our fancy little sticker on there. And we'll put the weather stripping back up. And I'll put a little cavity wax down in the bottom seam. And drop the glass in. Set it down in the regulator, snap it in. Now you can put the stationary glass in and the window track. Snap it into place. Push the channel down in there. Clip it into the door. Bolt the glass in. More stickers. Put the belt molding on. With our belt molding installation tool. I'll put the window up. Put the rest of our track in. Stick the water barrier back up there. Put that screw in our belt molding. I can put the door speaker in. Plug it in. Run the bolts in. Now we'll put the outer molding on. Just line it up, snap it in. Now you can put the door panel on. Connect the handle and wires. Slide it over the door lock and snap it in. One bolt behind the handle, one bolt under the door pull. Plug in our switches and snap them in. Put our little cap behind the door handle. Two screws in the bottom of the panel. We're done. Now we're on to the front door. So we'll pull our old door apart. Pop the door panel off. Unbolt the mirror. Unbolt the door speaker. Unbolt the door module. Now we'll unbolt the window from the regulator. Bolt on the other side. And we slide the glass out. Our glasses are actually different. The limited is laminated. Our police interceptor was tempered. So now we can pull the wiring harness out. This wiring harness has a lot more wires in it and that door module, which is probably why our window didn't work. So we'll route it all in our new one. Snap it into place, plug it in, clip it into the A-pillar, and then we'll start routing it around the inside of the door.
snap it all in. I'll disconnect the door handle from the original door. Pull the cap off. And pull the handle out. This one has a plug on it, so you gotta disconnect it. Now we'll remove the door latch actuator assembly. It's also the handle for the outside. Pull this monster out of here. And we'll put it in our new one. This is all different from the old one. Put some bolts in the latch just to hold it in place. We'll snap the rest of it in. Put a screw in our outer handle. Holds the base in. Push our plug through, plug our handle in. Slide it forward. Now put our cap on there. Screw in the little retainer. Put the little cover back on. Now we can tighten up our latch. And put our window channel in. Push it into place. Drop the belt molding in. Screw the belt molding in. And drop our glass in. Set down the front corner first. And rock the back into place. Then slide it down to the regulator. Lift it up to where we can get to the bolts and tighten it up. Now we can put our window sweep in. I'll put the mirror on. Put the bolts in the mirror and plug it in. And now I'll put some cavity wax in the bottom seam. Two parts of this Ford that won't be routed out in a few years. Put our water barrier up. Put our door speaker in. Bolt it in. And put the outer molding up. Push it on. Get a snap together model. Then you can put the door panel back on. Plug all our wires and our handle in. Set it down into the window sweep and snap it all in. Put our bolt behind the door pole and put our bolt in our handle. Put the cap back on. Then put the window switches in and snap them into the door panel. And we have our last two screws in the bottom of the door. Now onto the front bumper. Pull the lower valance off of our old bumper. Unscrew it. Then unclip it. Now we can pull the lower cover off. Just unclips. And now we can put our new upper cover on. Line up all the tabs. Then we'll use the bumper assembly tool. Snap it all back together. And put the center trim on. Just snaps in. Got a 
couple J nuts on the bottom. Put our lower valance on. Bolt it in. Now we put our fog lights in. Bezels go in first. I just snap in. We'll set our fog lights in there. A couple bolts in those. Now the bezel for the other side. Clip it in. Drop our fog light in. Bolt that in. Now we put our grill on. I had to get a new one since our old one was broken. Just snaps into place. Uh, take the emblem off the front because for all that money you pay for the grill, you don't get an emblem with it. So we'll put it on. I think we just decreased the value of the vehicle. Put our J nuts on the top. And now we're ready to put our wiring harness on. We'll set it down into place and start clipping it all in. A couple screws for the camera and the washer. Keep plugging the rest of it in until we get all the way back around to the other side. Put our cap on there for our tow hook. And now we can put our energy absorber on, which on this just happens to be a piece of plastic. We'll snap it down into place. It really just keeps the bumper aligned with the bumper reinforcement. Not really an absorber, I guess, but that's what they call it. So now we can put our side brackets on. They clip into the bumper. And there's a couple rivets. Same thing on the other side. Once you have a pneumatic rivet gun, you're too spoiled to go back. I'm even willing to listen to the air compressor just to use it. Now we got a few broken plugs to repair. So we got our old harness from our used front end. So we'll take what we need off of it. We have this plug for the AC pressure sensor. So we'll pop the center off. Then we can pull the gasket out. Pull the split loom back. These plugs are kind of a pain. They don't come apart very easily. Take the rest of the tape off, separate the wires. I can disconnect the inside of the plug. Slide the back of it back. That's actually the part we're trying to change. Unfortunately, we have to take the rest of this off to get that out. So we'll pop the pins out of there. And take the center of the plug out. And we take the little gasket off. Now we can get to this outer piece of the plug. So the pins are just the exact same size. You gotta get them just right for them to slide out of the hole. And there's our two plugs. You see the one tab is broken on the other one. That's why it wouldn't stay in. So I'll take one pin out at a time, put it back in the other plug in the same place. Make sure I don't mix them up. Just keep disconnecting our wires one at a time, putting them back in the other one. And we'll just kind of rotate the plug on the last one until it comes out. Slide the pin into our new one and slide it all the way back. Now we can put our little gasket in there. Weather tight seal, whatever you want to call it. Put all our pins in in the same order. Make sure none of them are twisted. 
I'm going to put the inner piece of the plug in. Slide all the pins in there. Snap them in. I'll slide our little seal in there. Put the seal on the other side. Put our little retainer on for our pins. Push the outer piece of the plug back over the little inner piece. Make sure all the pins are in there. I'll tape it up. So you wrap the tape around the wires themselves. Then you pull the split loom down. Leave the tape coming out of the split loom and then wrap it up. That's how the factory does it. So that's how I'll do it. There's just a couple of wraps to hold the split loom on. All good. Got a couple more wires to repair. Pretty much the same process. Plug that in, make sure it's going to stay. And now we're onto the shutters. So we'll bolt the shutters in, plug them in. So there's two more bolts that are inside the shutters, so we need to open them up. So we'll start up our exploder, and it'll open them up for us. Now we can get to those last two bolts. There's one bolt on the bottom that holds the bottom pair of shutters to the top. Now we'll put our bolts in our brackets. And put our washer line on the inside of our hood. Snap in our washers. Put the hood insulation up there. Put all of our push pins in there. Our rubber gasket on. And we'll put our seal across the front of the hood. Now we're on to our headlights. Plug in our bulbs and set it into place. Run our bolts in and tighten them up. And now we'll put this headlight together. Because for 1400 bucks, you don't get the whole light. Some assembly required. So the first thing we need is the bracket on the bottom for the bumper. And we need the bulbs. Pull the little cap off, and we can pull the bulb out, twist it out, unplug it, and it'll give you much room in there. Now I take the module off the bottom, unplug it, and make sure to give you just enough wires to make this really inconvenient. Now we can put our new light together. Snap our bulbs in, twist them in, plug them in, and put our little plastic cap back on. I go flip it over, put this module in. With our wires, it could be just a little bit longer. Bolt our module in. Now we'll put our bumper retainer on the bottom. Bolt it in. Since we're about to put the headlight on, this is our last chance to put some cavity wax in that upper frame rail that we replaced. Even though we put some in there before, we'll finish it off with our wand, get a good coating.
There's a couple brackets in there. I want to make sure we get on both sides of it. A little more in the back. Now we got those upper supports and the lower supports. Anywhere we welded, inside or outside. Now we'll do inside the lower frame rail because we did weld to it. Plug in the bulbs in the module. Set the headlight into place and bolt it in. Now we can set the bumper up there. Make sure it's in clipped in under the headlight. Snap it all in. Now we can bolt it all in, bolt the closeout panel in, put our push pins in there. We can plug in our washer lines and our plug later. I'll bolt the brackets on the sides. Now we can do the brackets on the other side and plug in our wiring harness. I plugged in our washer hose, so now we can fill up our washer bottle. Now we can put our covers over the fenders on the sides. And put the cowl screen on. The windshield's already been replaced, so we can put it all back together. Snap it into place, put all our push pins in. Now we can install the wiper arms. Set them into place and line them up. Tighten up the nuts. Put our little caps on. Test it and make sure everything works. Washers, wipers. Hope they work. I already bolted them in. So now we can glue our fender on. You can do this when you're putting the fender on. I like to do it after the fender's installed just because you're not moving it around. So this stuff goes on pretty thick, kind of like seam sealer, and after a couple minutes it starts expanding, it turns into foam. It seems like there's never any rhyme or reason, it just starts all of a sudden expanding. So I like to do it after the fender's installed because it makes less of a mess. But do it however you like. Once we got all that in, we'll bolt the bottom of the fender back up, make sure our gaps are all right. And we'll go put the other side together so that we're not getting our fingers in all that foam. Clip the wheel opening molding on. And everybody's favorite fender liners. Stuff it up in there. Now you can put all the little push pins in. Couple of bolts in the wheel opening molding in the front bumper. And now we're onto the passenger side. Hopefully our glue is dry. If it's not, I will most certainly put my hands in it and find out. So now the wheel liner's in, put the wheel opening molding on, bolt it in. And put the cover back underneath. Put the rest of the bolts in our wheel liners. Bolt our cover in. So we have a little bit of a noise going over bumps. Can't really seem to put my hand on it. Oh, Maybe that's because those go there. So we'll have to put them back in. So people asked if the forklifts damage cars, and here's your answer. Yes. On Explorers, it seems to pull every single one of the rear sway bar bushings out. 
So you end up having to pull it apart and put them back in. The 18 we just did only had one that was out. This one got both of them. So we'll put the bushing in our Ford certified press. It's even blue. Put a little grease on it and smash it back together. Push the end of it in there, make sure it's not smashing the rubber. It's ready to go back in. Put a little grease on the sway bar. And push our bushing on there. Work it back around to where it belongs. And put our sway bar link in. Put the nut on there. Hold a little tension on it and you can tighten it up. Now we can bolt our bushings back up in there. Now we'll take the other side apart. Pull the bushing bracket off and disconnect our sway bar link. Remove the bushing and this tag that's going to be in our way. Put it back in our press, press it back together. And back on the sway bar. Slide it over there. Put our sway bar link in. If you pull down on the sway bar, it kind of locks that link at a bad angle and it'll keep it from spinning. Enough to tighten it up so you don't have to go get a wrench. Then make sure to torque it down to manufacturer specs. And now we're on the oil change. Spin the filter off. Once it drains, clean off the base. Put our new filter up there. Screw it in. Yes, I put oil on the gasket. Alright, tighten up that oil filter. Go get our breaker bar and really crank it on there. Like I was taught at Jiffy Lube. Pull the oil plug out. I'll put the oil plug back in. Tighten it up. 6,000 foot-pounds. After we get the one inch impact. And now we can throw the oil back in it. cap back on and our oil change is done. Now we can go on to our rocker moldings. Snap them back in. Snap in our wheel opening moldings and bolt those in. Now I'll put the rocker molding on the driver's side. Snap it all in. Bolt in our wheel opening molding. Now we can install the front license plate bracket without cleaning the bumper, just to really rile up the clean freaks. So we'll put all the rivets in there to hold it in place. And we'll tighten up the rivets. Now it's time to change that tire that has a slice in it. The quickest tire replacement ever. Try not to break the tire sensor. Thanks Ford for TPMS. Fill up our new tire. Through the magic of video editing, it balanced out perfectly on the first try without weights. Don't believe everything you see on TV. So we got a couple door dings on our Explorer. One on the rear hatch above the handle, it's a pretty good sized one. And one above the driver's door handle, just a little ding there. So in order to get rid of them, we're going to have the PDR guy come out. I mean, 
the PDR magician. Because the work they do is amazing. But in order for him to do his thing, we need to get these door panels out of the way. So we can get in there. So we'll pull the cover off the rear gate. Disconnect the plug. And pull it down. Now I pull the door panel off for the driver's door. Turns out I did this for nothing because he ended up just using the little hole that you take the screw out of for the door handle. But I wanted to make sure he had everything out of his way. So he did his thing. Can't tell there was ever a dent there. Pretty amazing work. Same thing with the driver's door. Since we had the door apart, put some cavity wax down in the seam. So at least we didn't do it for nothing. Put our water barrier back up. Bolt our speaker back in. Flip our door panel in. Bolt it all back in. Put our caps on. Put our switches in. And onto the rear gate. Put a little cavity wax in the seam. Which this one is sealed pretty good at the bottom, so these might not rot out. But I'm not taking any chances. We'll plug in our button. Snap our trim panel into place with our trim panel installation tool. Clip the trim in on the sides of the window. Put our bolts in the pull handle. And close the gate. So, here's our finished Explorer. Well, our almost finished Explorer. The PDR guy came after I shot this portion of the video, so it still has some dents here. But, they're gone now. I also got the tire and installed that after this video. So there's still a slice in this one. But it was enough for me to get it up to the wheel alignment and get that done. So some of you noticed there's snow on the ground in the first video. That's because I got this back in March. I went to work on the Mustang after that, so this one got put on hold, along with quite a few other builds. That's why you no longer see the Mustang. I need to get these done. The profitable builds come first. The Mustang cost me money. So having the used front end for this build really helped save a lot of money. Not just for the obvious body panels, but for little things like the hood cable, the overflow bottle, the washer lines and washer bottle, and even the electrical connectors. All that little stuff can really add up. Even the little modules on the headlights and the bulb sockets that don't come with the headlights. That all came off the 18, and I ended up selling that headlight on eBay. Somebody else rebuilt it, threw it away. I don't care. I got money, so it doesn't matter to me. So now that all my parts are gone for Explorers, looks like I'm done with them for now. Until I find another good deal on one, and we start this all over again. Looks like the build is done, but there's only one way to be sure. It's time to play everyone's favorite game, what's in my console. So let's find out. Bolts, as always. What else? Well, there goes all the reliability of this vehicle. Oh, never mind. This one came with the Ford Reliability Package. The Gold Package also includes a AAA card. Better hang on to those. I do plan on driving it a little while. What else do we have in here? This must be one of those new digital hammers. No, it's that torque, torque, torquey, torque wrench I've heard so much about. How to give this thing a try? Better not throw this out. Oh. I was looking for this. Been kind of thirsty. Salty, yet delicious. Getting kind of low. Gonna have to fill that up. 
What else is in here? Oh! Trailer unloading for dummies. Not much for books. Oh, pictures. I can handle this. That's where I went wrong. Let's give it a try. That looks like it. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see what's coming up next and how I fill this container. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.